Dear friends, blessings in the name of the Lord, and I hope you're doing great. Before we get started, please help me to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with your friends. It will be so helpful. It's my aim to produce good Christian content for you. Today, the question is this, why am I joyless? Why am I joyless? Even I know as a Christian, that Christians can have real joy. Joy is different from happiness. Happiness is just temporal feelings of elation. But joy is something deep down. It's the inner man. It's the inner soul. It's within the heart that the Lord can grant us real joy. So Christians can ask, you know, I used to have that joy, but why is it missing? Why it seems like the joy of the Lord is no longer my strength. Why is it as if joy has disappeared from my life? And I want you to take a few moments to really examine what's going on in your own personal life, in your own journey, because there's always reasons for certain things that happens. It's really a cause and effect. When it comes to those spiritual things, there are causes, there are effects of it. And joy is no different. So I want you to consider one verse right now, and this would really help you to see certain things. This is found in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 8. This is what it says. Peter writes, Though you have not seen him, referring to Jesus, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Did you, did you catch what Peter said? Let's look at the verse again. He says, Though you have not seen Jesus, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him. And rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory. Peter is saying something really vital here. If I were to give you a summation of what he's saying is this. Love for Jesus and faith in Jesus leads to real joy. You catch that? Love for Jesus, faith in Jesus, results in great joy. To make it even shorter, love and faith in Jesus will result in joy. Now, some of you would say, but I love Jesus and I place my faith in him. Then the question would be, where is the joy then? If you really examine your life, perhaps the truth of the matter is that you're losing your first love. Your faith in Christ may be waning. And so now there isn't that same level of spiritual elation and gladness in the Lord. Perhaps in the past, you had excitement to read the word. You were just very much into God's kingdom. You were really looking forward to the next sermon to hear, excited about the things of God. But perhaps now you are beginning to be lukewarm, beginning not to be excited, not keen on spiritual matters. And if that's the case, it's no wonder why joy is fleeting from you. It's very clear. I mean, First Peter 1.8 gives us a very big understanding of joy right it's the love for the lord it's faith in him that creates real lasting joy you say pastor it sounds so simple it's not that simple i mean that's the understanding but the complexity comes when we are not growing in love and faith for him that's where the real complexity comes because you are saying, but I know so much religion, but how come I don't seem to really connect with the Lord? Or how come my faith seems to be shaky, not really built up strong? And there are always reasons for that. And here are some suggestions that I pray would help. It really comes back to the very core basic foundations of our faith, which is every day, read our Bibles, pray every day that's it from there it should not be a perfunctionary 
transaction with the Lord. It should be a loving relationship with God. As you read His Word and you pray to Him, there should be a real connection there. If you say, Pastor, I don't see that connection going on, then you have to really come before the Lord and tell Him, Lord, I have lost joy. Perhaps I'm really losing love for you and faith in you. And God, I need to regain something that I used to have. For some of us, we might even say, Lord, I've never had that. I've seen the Christian religion as just a religion. I don't really see it as a real connection with you. You always seem far off and I don't know your heart. I, I don't really know you. Then cry out to him. He's waiting for you to cry out to him and he will respond. If you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. I just want to give you maybe one or two final thoughts about joy. See, joy is not an emotion and joy is not based on feeling. Joy is based on the fact and the truth that Jesus is the Son of God, that Jesus loves you and paid the price for your sin to die on the cross. Uh, Jesus promises you many things in the Word of God and He's your older brother, He's your friend, He's your master, He's your Lord. And all those relationships with Christ produces real joy. If we are seeing it only religious, then it turns out to be legalistic. The laws and commands of God will be stifling. His burdens will not be light to us, but will really be burdensome. Um, everything about the kingdom of God will not produce real genuine desire. Right? Instead of hungering and thirsting for the things of God, if you and I are hungering for the things of this world, it's no wonder why we're not satisfied. How do we be satisfied with the things of this world when God tells us to be truly satisfied in Him? Our true deepest satisfaction will be found in intimacy with the Lord, communion with the Spirit, reading of His Word, knowing Him. And if you say, but I don't sense all those things, then, well, get going though. Read the Word, pray, seek His face, and ask for the Lord to bring about a holy visitation. And you know, when the Lord begins to move and woo your heart and begin to pierce in deep, you're going to see so much joy, peace, patience, kindness. These things are in the Word of God. These things are true. God is not a liar. God is always telling the absolute truth. So you and I can trust Him. And you and I can say, like Peter, God, I'm going to love you, whom I've not seen. I'm going to believe in you, place faith in you, whom I've not seen. And I know all this but bring inexpressible joy. Joy that is unbelievable. Joy that is supernatural. Joy that is heavenly. Um, joy that is beyond what I, I have. And you know, deep down, every single person is looking for that level of satisfaction. But it can be found in the terms of this world that we live in. It must be found in another world. It must be found in another kingdom. It must be found in that King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. One final thought is, I keep thinking about the beautiful song, As the Deer Pants Fall, the water so makes the lungs for him. And that's penned by King David. There, there was a longing he had for the Lord. May we long for Christ in the same way a deer longs for waters. May we desire the Lord in the same way that when you look at durian or ice cream or something desirable to your lips, you are drawn. May we be drawn to the presence of God, drawn to His everlasting kindness. Well, God bless you as you consider these things. If you are losing joy or you do not have joy, then today is the day to begin to seek the face of God, to experience more joy, more love, and more faith in Christ. God bless you. I'll see you for the next video. God bless.